Hello, thanks for joining me. In today's video, we're going to be talking all about macro, macro lenses, macro characteristics, understanding the behavior of macro lenses, some things you might need to keep an eye out for, and things that you should develop under, an understanding of if you're shooting macro images. What are we waiting for? Let's get into it. This past week, I had the opportunity to shoot at a botanic gardens uh, as part of an event, and I was able to change out my camera system three different times, shoot with three different cameras, three different systems, three different macro lenses. And so I thought I would show back to back what it was like shooting with those and make this a video about understanding the characteristics of macro lenses, generally speaking, a little bit about the lenses I shot with in case you're interested in knowing. This is not a full lens review, so I'm not getting in depth into any one of these. I'm not going to be giving it a totally important and not at all arbitrary rating, but I will be talking about three lenses and my experiences with them. Now I was shooting first with a Sony a7R Mark III with a 90 millimeter macro. A little bit of disclosure, I have shot with this lens extensively. I wrote a book about macro photography and uh, the majority of that book was shot on a uh, A7 with, uh, original A7 with a 90 millimeter macro. So I know this lens very well. As a result, I didn't spend a lot of time with it. Next, I shot with a Nikon D500 and a 60 millimeter Nikon macro lens. Lastly, I shot with the Fuji X-H1 and their 80 millimeter macro. I'd shot with the Nikon 60 millimeter for, you know, many years now off and on, but I had never shot the Fuji 80 millimeter before this week. So that was an experiment and I was very excited to be able to play with it. Uh, there wasn't an opportunity for me to also shoot with the Canon 100 millimeter L series. I would have liked to round out my shooting with that lens, but I didn't have the opportunity. It was always checked out when I went to go and uh, see about it. So let's talk about the characteristics of lenses and what you're looking at when you look at a lens first. So we had three different focal lengths, 90, 80, and 60 in more and more wide angle order. And I know that I was shooting with two APS-C cameras and therefore the angle of view that I was actually seeing from them was more telephoto than you would expect that lens to be um, if I was thinking in terms of full frame and the A7R 3 So I know that we're going to get a mix of those effective focal lengths and different angles of view. So there's going to not be a real way of doing that kind of comparison, but I do want to say generally speaking that focal length is a way that we understand the angle of view that we view the world at. And the more telephoto you shoot, you are a more and more acute angle. And this means you see less background. Because I shot my most telephoto lens on a full frame and the other two lenses on APS-C, I have very little background in any of my images. I was always shooting very acute angles. But it's something you need to watch out for if you are shooting with a native aspect ratio, no, not aspect ratio, but image circle size of the lens and sensor size on the camera. As you shoot a wider angle, you will capture more background. So that's something we need to kind of put into play. If I want to have more of an environment inside of a shot, I do need to think about that image uh, and shooting more wide angle for my macro. I like to have almost no background whatsoever when I do macro work, and so I shoot more telephoto. I'm more of a fan of shooting 90 and 100 than 60 millimeter personally, but that is an aesthetic choice. It's not something prescribed to you. Now one thing that does change no matter what when we start talking about uh, these lenses and these focal lengths is something that's called the one-to-one -one ratio. Macro lenses are defined by being able to hit the one-to-one -one ratio, meaning the size of an object in real life is the size it shows up on the sensor. That's one-to-one. -one. To be called a macro lens, you must hit the one-to-one -one ratio. But notice in the definition, I did not have to say what distance I was to hit the one-to-one -one ratio. Generally speaking, the more telephoto you shoot, the farther away you are when you hit one-to-one -one ratio. So while 90, 80, and 60 millimeter lenses all hit one-to-one, -one, they do it at different distances. Specifically, the 60 millimeter hits the one-to-one -one ratio at 0.18 of a meter, while the Sony lens hits it at three-tenths of a meter. So there's a nice chunky distance of space difference in how far away you are when you're maximizing the macro ratio between the lenses. Now, what does that mean? Generally speaking, because I have a 90 millimeter macro, I'm farther away from a subject 
this is more appropriate for shooting things like grasshoppers or bees or dragonflies. And I had the opportunity to shoot all three. When you're working with wildlife, especially insects, but really anything, being too close is detrimental to getting the shot. And so you want to be farther away. I have shot bees with a 30 millimeter macro and it was a very difficult experience. But shooting with 90 or with 80 millimeter, I had a lot of success. When I was shooting with the 60 millimeter macro, shooting bees, I had to be farther back to not scare them away. As a result, I was not anywhere near the one to one ratio, so I wasn't maximizing my space. I had a lot of open space in the frame. Now, of course, you can make this work and have the full flower and have a more environmental shot, and that might be exactly what you're going for, in which case, great. But if you're trying to fill the frame with the bee, then realistically, you want to be shooting at the 80 or 90 or 105 millimeter macro kind of range. So that's going to work better for you. Another interesting characteristic of lenses, and not enough people know this, is that macro lenses can be aperture variable. Now you don't expect this because it's a prime lens. In prime lenses, you think they don't have aperture variance to them. Now telephotos can, the classic 70 to 300 starts at around f4. As you zoom, you lose light until you're at f5.6. But the macro lens has the ability to be aperture variable as well. It is a way of making them smaller, lighter, cheaper. Specifically, the Nikon 60 millimeter macro is aperture variable. It might be 2.8 when you're shooting at a one to two ratio, making the object half size within the frame that it is in real life. But as you approach one to one, that's going to drop. And you are going to be shooting at one to one ratio closer to F5. So that means that the 60 millimeter macro saves a lot of space and cost by being aperture variable. The Tamron 90 millimeter is aperture variable and several other popular macro lenses are as well. However, the 90 millimeter from Sony I knew going in was not aperture variable, but what I did not know is that the Fuji 80 millimeter is also not aperture variable. You can hit f2.8 at the one to one ratio. Now I think that this matters because the money in a macro lens is between the one to one and a half and the one to one ratio. That's what you're paying for. And if you're expecting that to also be the aperture listed on the box, and you have an aperture variable macro lens, you're gonna be sorely disappointed. You're also going to be shooting a stop to two stops dimmer than you expected. And that matters because that's your ISO or that's your shutter speed that you have to sacrifice to make the shot work. So the 80 millimeter macro from Fuji, I did not know going in that it was not aperture variable, but it's not and it's gorgeous. You can produce some really shallow depth of field with a lens like that and produce beautiful quality stuff. So what were my takeaway from the three lenses? Now I have to say I need to be fair to the 60 millimeter macro from Nikon because I was not shooting it on a full frame camera body. Therefore I was not seeing everything it can do. For me to do a real review of that lens would be the only way to be fair, but I did produce chromatic aberration off of it. And so it's probably an amount that I would not see was I shooting on a full frame camera, but as I was shooting on a D500, when I got into the image a little bit, then I started to see it. And I was moving into the images a lot because I had to be farther back in order to shoot the B and not scare it away. And so I wasn't at a full ratio, which means I had to crop into the frame. So that was a little bit of a trap, but it does have beautiful color. It does have wonderful uh, sharpness to it. The 90 millimeter macro from Sony has been a workhorse that I've worked with for a long time now. It works beautifully, it's sharp, it's really contrasty, wonderful color for shooting flowers. But the lens that really surprised me was the 80 millimeter from Fuji. This is a beautiful lens. I had no idea how good it was until this past week. It's probably the most contrasty of the three, meaning that color shows up great. Its detail is spectacular. Now, when I used the 60 millimeter macro from Nikon, didn't have to crop into it and was able to be close, its deal was fantastic as well. So I'm not going to be putting that lens down anytime soon. But the Fuji really surprised me at how much richness I got out of it. There's very few opportunities to shoot with a bad macro lens. They tend to be sharper than the average lens. They tend to have more contrast. Uh, and color richness to them than the average lens because of the subject matter you're shooting with that type of lens. So I love macro lenses. Also wonderful to use for portraiture for these exact same reasons. 
Anyway, we still have a little bit of time before macro season kind of ends for us for 2018, and I hope that you pick up some macro lenses and enjoy shooting with them as much as I have. Um, that's what I've got for you today. Uh, take a look at some of the other videos I've got. I end up talking a lot about lenses on this channel, a little bit more out of accident than by design, but I'm having fun doing it, so that's cool. If you've got any questions about other types of shooting you want me to talk about, get into the comments. I'd love to hear about it. In the meantime, give us a like, give us a subscribe. I very much appreciate it. It means a lot to me, and have a wonderful day. Take care. I actually liked that better. <laughs>